Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. Some of you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Don Chorus, Bjorn's Path. So the last place we left off, Bjorn, we had just joined Bjorn in his room. He's getting us some drinks, and we're gonna see where it goes. Maybe we got enough for uh, for a video here. Hopefully we do. But anyway, guys, please sit back and enjoy. Let me detain you for the next 20 minutes, and let's jump right in. Hopefully 20 minutes, maybe a little bit less, probably a little bit less. Mm, sorry about that. All right, we're back. And all right, alarm chain, you're up, and let's go. Okay. Uh, Bjorn is grabbing us two more bottles, so lift up the empty one and read the label. It's just a plain lager. I'm not familiar with that one, but it has the vibe of the cheaper ones I could find in the store. What beer is that? Perla, imported from Poland. I buy it to keep in touch with my roots. Here you are. The beer is almost ice cold. Bjorn must have kept it outside the window for a while. I didn't pay much attention to the taste before, but even the hookah made me much more perceptive than usual. It really works in subtle ways. The taste is hoppy and dry, but with a bit of sweetness from the malt. Just a good beer. Maybe it's nothing fancy, but it's enough for me. Hey, this is good. I'm happy you think so. This is nice. I really missed it. Some hookah, some beer, some good company, and all the time we could want. Yeah, I think I'm starting to see the appeal. It makes me think of my evenings with Miko but we had music instead of hookah and didn't drink. Frankly, it's a rather universal cross-cultural recipe for a good evening. Friends, some light entertainment, and a good conversation. You know, you're awakening some parts of me that I forgot. Do I? The me that could spend the whole evening talking with a friend about just anything, and consider it the best way of spending time. You're done with your beer already? I look at the bottle in my paw. Indeed, it is empty. Apparently. Hey, I need to catch up. Though with my weight, I should drink at least twice as much as you to really catch up. I'm not feeling any alcohol yet. You? I think I do. This is also awakening the part of me that likes to drink. Definitely. I'm not sure if that's good, but I'm in the, but I'm in the mood for it too. There's also a part of me awakening that wonders how it would feel to snuggle into that fluffy bear in front of me. But I don't know if listening to it would be a right thing to do. Though, Bjorn's own words resound in my head. How we filter ourselves when we're sober and end up regretting that later. But I'm afraid of rejection and I'm afraid I'd scare him. Do you have any more of these? I tap on the empty bottle. I don't know if it's a good idea, but I'll see where this will take me. I have something better, actually. And by better, I mean stronger. Bjorn walks up to the window, opens it, and takes out a flat glass bottle full of amber-colored liquid from a small heap of snow on this windowsill. Oh, wow, that's a nice way of cooling it. What's that? Something a friend from Poland showed me. Now he crosses the room. Now he crosses the room his bag. Now he crosses the room for his bag, lying on the floor and still full of his stuff, and fishes out a bottle of milk from it. Uh, Bjorn, what are you doing? Nut vodka with nut milk. Ooh, that sounds delicious. Uh, absolutely deranged. Quite the contrary. Pure genius. He opens both and then really mixes them in the glasses that were provided in the room. Bjorn, this can't be good. Have you ever tried it before? I did, and it's delicious. It's nut time. <laughs> oh, Lord. Bjorn, you don't know what you're saying. That can be interpreted in so many different ways. I grab the glass from Bjorn and I suspiciously. Well, even if it turns out to be awful, it's still alcohol. A tasting sip. Huh. It really is good. Like a cream dessert, but liquid. You're supposed to do that in one gulp, though. No, oh, wait, the hookah's dying out. In one gulp? Okay, here goes nothing. The alcohol diluted in the milk burns my already irritated throat only a little. But if this is what we're going to be drinking for the rest of the evening, I'm guaranteed to get drunk. Uh-oh. Carvin, are you there? Yes? Why can't I see you? I think we just lost power. Uh, hold on, just let me... Ah, okay, so this is the power blackout. Cool. Bjorn turns on his laptop, illuminating the room with an almost clinically cold glow. I hope this passes quickly. The battery in my laptop is a flop. It's going to last us maybe two hours or so. So I bet the guest house has some power generators and they'll kick on and they'll kick in shortly anyway. Two hours is just enough to watch a film. Do you have anything downloaded? Of course I do. We sit down on the bed, pressed up against each other. I'd never tell that to Bjorn, but power outages make me feel slightly uneasy, especially when they happen in places I'm not too familiar with. 
The faint blue glow of the moon fills the room like fills the room like water, as if we were on the bottom of the ocean. The air feels stuffy and suffocating despite the open window. A chorus of muffled voices sounds through the walls, but I can't pick out any words. So, what would you like to watch? Uh, something lighter than yesterday. I couldn't take another film like that two nights in a row. Ha! <laughs> sure. I should have something. I'll keep the hookah going. There's still some tobacco left in it. Bjorn starts browsing his folder while I lean back against the wall. Okay, I found something. Does Fallen Angels sound familiar? Nope, never heard of it. A spiritual sequel to a film I liked a lot. It should be much lighter than the anime yesterday. What is it about? I don't know. <laughs> the first one was about two policemen and the women they met along the way. Everything's set in Hong Kong. Hong Kong? I don't think I've ever seen a film from there. I hope I'm in for a wild ride. By the way, how about I turn off the light so that it doesn't blind us when the power is back? A good idea, yeah. I don't think we're going anywhere anyway. Anywhere anyway, right? I wasn't planning to. Bjorn gets up to turn off the light, starts the film, and returns to the bed, sitting down next to me. I lean on his sturdy shoulder as if he was a giant pillow. His fur is soft and so nice to the touch, like a sheet of folded satin I could brush my fingers into. We stay like that together as the opening credits roll. That better not be it. I want that picture. Someone told me there's a... Okay. Wow. This is really slow-paced, like, extremely so. I'm bored, and it doesn't look like anything is going to start happening in this film. Bjorn has a really weird taste in cinematography. I have to remember not to trust it ever again. Carvin? This thing is an absolute bore, isn't it? Yeah. Sorry, the prequel is definitely faster paced. How far are we even? That's one fourth of the whole thing. Oh. It's not like I mind too much, not when it's with not when I'm with Bjorn, but even if the film is boring, have him having him near me is enough for me to stay. More alcohol and we'll get through it. If you say so. I'm still curious how this will go, so if it won't bore you to death, we can continue. I shouldn't judge a film before I actually see the whole thing, so yeah, I'm willing to give it a shot. Two more drinks coming right up then. Oh dear. Bjorn gets up from the bed, turns on the light, and walks off to make us more drinks. I pause the film so that Bjorn doesn't miss anything while he's busy making us more of this milky delight. I, can, I know who else is probably going to get a milky delight. <laughs> I stand up straight. I stand up too, straightening out my t-shirt and trousers that got all crumpled up from lying from lying in the bed. Bjorn? Yeah? I hope this won't sound too weird. Can I drop the clothes? It's uncomfortable being in them in the bed. Oh, good idea, especially in case we fall asleep while watching. Do you think there's a risk? The film didn't seem that boring. Well, I'm making this next batch of drinks stronger. Bjorn prepares the drinks on the table, mixing equal parks vodka and milk, filling one glass almost to the brim, the other to the half. He passes me my glass, and then salutes with his drink, almost spilling some in it. Almost, spill, almost spilling some in it. To friends! To friends! We clink the glasses and take a big sip each. Oh, Bjorn wasn't exaggerating. This is much stronger than when he served me before. No. Oh. Meanwhile, Bjorn already put his glass down and took off his t-shirt. It didn't do much to hide his robust build anyway, but seeing him actually shirtless is something else entirely. I don't want to stare at him and make Bjorn uncomfortable, though, so I put my drink down, too, and start undressing myself. Ooh. I glance at Bjorn to see if he's looking at me, but he's busy undressing himself and pays no attention to me. Good. I feel oddly self-conscious exposing myself right now. The chilly air on my naked fur makes me shiver nervously. The warmth from the alcohol heats me up from the inside, spreading through my veins and relaxing my muscles. Hmm, the drink really was strong. I'm starting to feel incoherent. Even taking off my trousers seems more complicated than usual. M maybe I should have eaten more than just a light dinner a few hours ago. I had no idea the evening would end like this, though. I keep surprising myself lately. But that's good, I think. It's nice to do things. Be brave. Catch the moment. Feel alive. You sure you're fine? Yeah, why? I reply while struggling to pull my paw through my trouser through the trouser leg. Just asking. I assume you know yourself well enough to know where your limits are. It, hmm. D do I? But even if I don't, I guess learning from mistakes works well. I'm good. I, I feel fantastic. I think I needed that. Well, good. Want to continue with the film? If it means sitting next to each other on one bed, then yeah. I nod and walk over to the light switch to let some darkness in. With the lights off, all my senses become sharper, though dulled a bit by the alcohol when I breathe in. I can clearly smell Bjorn's deep scent under the cherry and mint smoke permeating the room. 
He smells of chocolate and nuts, with a hint of spice, and I think I can smell some arousal on him, too. Or maybe it's just mine. Am I horny for him? I think I am. Maybe that's why I was feeling anxious when we were undressing. Maybe I'm not even that drunk, but just overwhelmed. What am I planning to do? I don't know myself. I, I know I just... I know I wanted to just cuddle up to him for a while. I haven't felt close to anyone for a long time. Hold up, guys. Let me make sure the adult content... That safe for work content is... Okay. All right. Good. All right. Now that I really think of it, I've been terribly lonely. And just... Haven't allowed myself to feel that, re repressing it to some deeper part of me, and now it overcomes me like a tidal wave. I attended classes, I go for walks to the city center, I talk with people online, but I haven't really had real contact with anyone since I moved out, or even earlier. I slip through the days focused on the tasks ahead of me, my mind always everywhere, elsewhere. I yearn for intimacy and understanding. So now, in one room with someone other than my roommate from the dormitory, who I have nothing in common with, I'm finally remembering how it is to have friends. But it all combines within me with my desire, and besides just wanting to be here with Bjorn, feel close to him and talk to our heart's content, I, I want him. It's a burning feeling, and I hate it, and I hate myself for feeling it, but it's still there. Yep, I remember having that. Yep, I remember when my best friend would come over and spend the night, I would have this feeling. I didn't know how to explain it, but it was just like an urge to just... It was like an urge to be physical. And only, like, when I got older did I realize, oh, hey, I thought he was attractive. <laughs> but anyway, a little, little bit of lore for Nary. I can continue hating myself for it, or I can learn to embrace it. Ready? I'm resuming the film! Yeah, just getting used to the darkness. I get into the bed next to Bjorn, covering myself with a duvet up to my waist. My thighs pressed against uh, pressed up against his, the intense warmth seeping through my fur. At least I know he doesn't mind that, otherwise he'd have moved his leg. Is this enough, having him near me? It might have to be. The film continues and the tempo picks up after the jukebox scene. Does this city really look so grimy? It looks like an absolute dystopia. It's certainly densely populated. It's certainly a densely populated city. That's almost all I know about it. It can't be that bad, though. Who would want to live there otherwise? Ha! You'd be surprised. People live in some really awful places. Like, have you heard of Nor Norelsk or Yakut... Y Yakutsk? Y Yakutsk? Yakutsk? There are people living there, even though the conditions seem way more extreme than this. Fair point. Why do they live there, though? I'm gonna lower the music while I'm just dead. Why do they live there, though? They must have been born there and just stayed. That's where their families were, all their friends, the places they knew, the language they spoke. Most people live where they live just out of habit, or some feeling of belonging stemming from familiarity. That's usually either their hometown, where they moved to the study, or where they got their first job. Bjorn picks up his drink and takes a sip before continuing. I already forgot about mine, so now I pick it up too. Oh, the sweet taste of nut milk. Oh, you, ooh, mm, that's some good stuff. I'm lucky because I don't remember Poland, so I barely have any emotional attachment to it. I feel good where I live now. It would be cool to live out there, in an exotic country unlike anything you'd see here, at least for a while. Bjorn shifts and rests his head on my lap, covered with a duvet. Uh, I really don't know what to do now or how to interpret this. Maybe. It seems exhilarating, though. Uh, just look at them, trying to find their way through these endless narrow corridors and streets lined with stalls. It looks like an urban hellscape. His head is heavy, definitely heavier than Miko's. It fills most of my lap, but it's not uncomfortable, quite the contrary. Is it pathetic that my only remotely sexual experiences so far were with my heterosexual friend? Yeah, I think so. Maybe not. Maybe I'm not Maybe I'm not a late bloomer or anything of sorts. Maybe I, it's just normal. Oh, fuck it. What's normal, anyway? Like, I ever cared about that. The director surely finds beauty in all this. It's obvious when you look at the shots. I kind of want to pet him, but I know I shouldn't. I don't want him to feel uncomfortable. Asking if I can would be would just would be just as uncomfortable, and hearing refusal would ignite would ignite within me, me block would ignite me with shame. So instead, I lift my arm and rest my paw on his belly in a more comfortable position, with the with the least amount of affection possible. He doesn't seem to mind. It's visually stunning. I have to admit that. Seeing that Bjorn is comfortable like that, I relax and just enjoy this moment of closeness. Though the hypnotic music still seeps through the speakers, the film doesn't matter anymore. There's just Bjorn and me. 
He had to be lonely, too. I'm seeking closeness like that and closeness like that now. I rub a small circle with my paw, which beyond response with a soft whimper. Really? Come on, Carvin, take the hint. This is fine. You're not doing anything wrong. I finish the drink in one big gulp and put the glass down. I don't feel the taste of alcohol anymore, but it warms up my body almost immediately, and the edges of my consciousness blur. Bjorn has a round and fuzzy belly, soft and pleasant under, the under my touch. My paw traces circular patterns across its surface, sometimes punctuated by the bear's approving rumble. Finally, I gather my courage and pet him gently and affectionately with my other paw. Bjorn responds by, intensi by intensifying the, the rumbling, and although I can't see well into the screen's glow, I swear he's blushing. Then I notice it. I tried not looking that way to honor his privacy, but I saw something shift and pulsate in the periphery of my vision. Bjorn is pitching a tent in his boxers, and not just any tent, more like a whole marquee. I blink in disbelief, not trusting my sight, but it's still there. He is a bulky guy with a much wider frame than me, but I didn't think it would translate to having a monster hidden in his pants. Carvin, you're kind of, uh, poking me with your bone. <laughs> hmm? Oh. Bjorn, I am so sorry, I don't know how this happened! I jump away if that didn't mean sending Bjorn to the I jump away if that didn't mean sending Bjorn to the floor, so I only hide my snout in my paws, the immense embarrassment only taking a first bite into me. Don't panic, I don't think I mind. It's kind of amusing. Uh, amusing? You have a boner too. Oh, y you're right. This is wonderfully funny now. Bjorn, can I ask you something? It's going to be embarrassing. Though, can I really make this situation any more embarrassing? Go ahead. Are you gay? Not really. Well, I don't know. I don't think so. How can I be sure, though? <laughs> no, I really don't know. And to be completely honest, I didn't give much thought. But you're cute. Uh, I'm cute. Oh, my cheeks get so hot I feel like a fire hazard. Do you want to, like, do something together? I think we kind of already are doing something together, Carvin. So you don't mind? Well, this feels nice. I don't think I want to stop. I take it as a confirmation and put both my paws back on him, one on his belly and the other on his chest. Only now with my paws in him, I can really appreciate how big he is. His pelt is dense and well-kept, hiding his robust build underneath. And I think I like this. I just want to snuggle myself into this big guy like a teddy bear. Blood rushes to my head along with a sudden realization. I'm doing something with a guy, or anyone for that matter, for the first time in my life. This is a big thing, and it's... Nothing along the lines of a romantic sex with my boyfriend. It's exploring each other with a newly made friend, nervous but eager. It's not how I imagined my first time, but it's not to say I'm not enjoying it. I press my snout to Bjorn's chest, wide and burly. He definitely smells of arousal. I didn't pick it up before, but when he's wearing clothes, when he, when, when he was wearing clothes, and I was further away from him, but he has quite a potent scent. Not the tail, not the stale, acrid kind of it, but a fresh musk full of pheromones. Hmm, you smell really nice. Thanks, I rarely hear that. Your hair smells good too, like honey and thyme. Bjorn's boxers do a, do a little conceal his thick member, its outline visible clearly through the material. Gathering my courage, I gently rub the tip with my two paw pads, getting an impatient throb, getting an impatient throb and another whimper in response. Not wanting to wait anymore, I put my paw through the, fluff, through the fly of his boxers and take the whole take his male organ out into the into the open. Oh my goodness! Well, I can't be showing that. Holy fuck! <laughs> Baron didn't lie during the bot during the spin the bottle. Uh, he's big, intimidatingly. Uh, heady smell of arousal hits my nose, intoxicating and delicious. And I lean in to take some, take in more of it. My snout just centimeters away from his hefty rooster. I put my paw around it to see if it will even fit. It doesn't. It's so thick I need two, and they could barely be enough. Uh, Bjorn? Hmm? Something wrong? Bjorn's voice is quiet and timid, as if he was afraid I wouldn't find him attractive or change my mind and back out suddenly. But he's big, burly, and so hot I want all of him. How do you hide this monster in your trousers? I wear them a bit baggier than necessary. I can sense his nervousness, but also eagerness, as his, yeah, twitches some, spurting some watery preeminent to block so much of this. It's cute. He blushes deeply and keeps still, but... His scent in his, his scent in his, uh, rock-hard throbbing, yeah, betray his arousal. This doesn't feel real, yet it undoubtedly is. I'm holding maybe the biggest dick I've ever seen in my, seen in person in my paw. I give it a few slow strokes to really feel its heft. What a fat fucker. 
I still can't believe my eyes. I remember the throbs violently demanding attention, but I'm all focused on this monster before me. Bjornsson is so delicious, I could just stay like this and sniff him all over. Rub myself against his, yeah, until I smell like him. But I'm curious how he tastes, too. Something in me that was holding back, holding me back turns off, along with my inhibitions. Yeah, it's all the fucking alcohol. I am an animal. I act instinctively. Yep, 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 yep. yep. Mm-hmm. Oh, dear. It's good, and I want... Oh, my goodness. Yep. Mm-hmm. I close my snout. Now yeah, we're not stopping until this is over. It barely fits in my snout, bulging out my cheeks. It's softer than the rest of his rooster, so I... Gara... So I suck on it instinctively, prompting more sounds from the bear. His toes curl and his abdominal muscles tense under my chest. Then I feel his soft, wet nose rubbing against my... Yep. Uh, spinning sparks of pleasure up my spine. Well, around me, thick pillar of me, thick pillar of me. Thinking more of it into me until I presses against the back of my... Almost making me... Yep. And that thick fucker is not even halfway in. This feels good, and right in some primal sense. Even though my senses are dulled by the alcohol, I feel almost blissful. Bjorn's nose continues to travel up and down, my, stimulating me through the thin, thin fabric. It's like explosions of white light inside my head, fireworks of ecstasy. A gag again with Bjorn thrust me. Going back in my... Yep. Oh my god. Looks like he's... Looks like he's into it just as much as me. Yeah, god. Mm. Loud sounds fill the room as I start bobbing my head. Um... Yep. Sucking in looking the arms rooster until his whimpers turn into... Cries of pleasure. Fuck! Carbon! Where'd you learn to do that? I ignore his question and start fucking harder. Bjorn almost howls, pressing a sound against my balls. Trying to... Sound escaping... Oh. I guess I just discovered my natural talent. Oh, so he and I have something in common. <laughs> oh, fuck! Slow down a bit! But I don't want to. I can't even think of anything else in that thick... Uh, roast beef filling my maw. I want more. No, I need more. Bjorn scent is overpowering, intoxicated with his muscle. I press my head down to his thick... Yep. To the bunt. It rests in the back of my new maw again. My gag reflex kicks in again, but I fight against it and cram a tiny little bit of that monster into my face. The feeling is indescribable. I'm pushing I'm pushing my own limits, violating my body. Violating my body? Stuffing myself full of someone's... Okay, and it feels like absolute bliss. Drunk on alcohol and Bjorn's musk, I feel both numbed and electrified. I don't even hear Bjorn's... anymore. Most of his... Yeah, if it's inside me, bulging into my throat. It's uncomfortable. My jaw hurts. That's why I don't even care. I let Bjorn roll his hips and rub my mind, eager to please him. There's still a few good centimeters of that thing until it reaches his... Uh, is not vodka, and I want to get there. I struggle to catch my breath with that almost the thing that's almost the size of a beer can stretching my throat, but it doesn't matter. I want to make this bear feel good. Carvin! I oh fuck! Ooh, oh yeah, ha! Oh, mm. Then he lets out a wild, feral howl, tensing up. He finishes, uh, glazing the pastry, and I taste the pastry, and it's got some really good glaze. In fact, I decide to. Uh, grab the utensil that he used to glaze it, and I just start squirting the glaze into my mouth, because it's just that good. So much of it, it escapes my throat and spills from my maw, coating my tongue with thick, uh, with thick strands of, uh, that delicious, uh, frosting. I moan hungrily, swallowing up as much as I can. Guys, uh, Carvin is just, uh, he, he's just drinking some cake frosting here. He's a very hungry guy. It has a strong taste, sweet, bitter, and salty, but I don't mind it. I want all of it. I want all of Bjorn. Oh, goodness. My mind goes blank. There's a sudden explosion of white before my eyes, covering my whole vision, turning into all the colors of the rainbow as if in a prism. With my eyes shut, I collapse onto Bjorn, who's trembling and moaning in pleasure underneath me. But keep... Yeah. I'm determined to fit his whole hefty feelings inside me. How much can he... Oh, God. He still keeps on... Oh, my God. He just keeps going and going and going. My ears are ringing. Oof. Well, then. I want all of you. I'm drunk on Bjorn. I'm high on my own brain chemicals, riding the afterglow. The rest of the world ceases to exist. It's just me and Bjorn entwined together. A tiger and a bear. Two lovers, two friends, two lonely souls that found each other by chance. Whatever happens next, we have this night for ourselves. Until the sun rises, I can remain in your arms. I keep my head on your chest and listening to your beating heart. His heart beats slowly, each beat like a sledgehammer. 
Until the sun rises, I can touch your pretty face. I can keep you close, as close as I can, snuggle into my beating heart. I can get lost in your stripes, tracing them to the tip of my snout. Whatever happens next, I will never forget this night, Carvin. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, Ooh, woo! My goodness. Okay, guys, uh, I got some editing to do on this episode. Quite a lot of editing to do. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!